Hey Blender Bob here, welcome to episode 3 of Ask Blender Bob, where you tell me in the comments about a shot that you wonder how it's been done, and I will try, if possible, to do it in Blender and show you how it's been done. Now this time it's a little bit different, it's Blender Bob and friends, because I needed some help to do this one. So two guys from the office volunteered to help me, Alex for the rigging and animation, and Theo for lighting and look dev. Thank you guys so much for your help. So this one is about blowing up rats in... Minu, I'm recording. It's about blowing up rats in Stranger Things. This is the clip. You know what? I just thought of something. My son put a clip on the internet about his rabbit and he got over 130,000 views. I never got so many views for any of my clips. And I thought, well, maybe rabbits are popular and maybe that could bring me more views. So, you see where I'm going with that? Yeah, we're gonna blow up bunnies instead of rats. <laughs> <laughs> to blow up the rabbit, I did a duplicate of the geometry at the frame where it's supposed to blow up, and then I went into quick effect, quick liquid, and that will fill my rabbit with liquid. The default settings are good. The only thing I changed was the initial velocity, and I put it to 2 meters per second in Z, because I want the particles as they're emitted to go up a little bit so that they don't fall down right away. So we're done with that. Now if we go on the domain, I changed the resolution division to 128. The higher the better. I also animated the viscosity. Before frame 8, the viscosity is at 0 because I want a pure liquid that goes in the air. And as it goes down at frame 14, the viscosity goes to 0 0.01. So now I get a thick liquid. So I wanted a big splash and as it goes down, it's super thick. Of course, if you want to be able to render these particles, you will need to turn on the mesh. If you're on Linux, you want to use Unicache instead of VDB because motion blur will not work in Alembic. Yes, I sent a bug report. Also, you want to make sure that you use uh, speed vectors, otherwise you will not get your motion blur when you export in Alembic. Another thing I need to warn you about, and yes, I did send a bug report, if you export as USD instead of Alembic, you will not get your motion blur. I use Alembics because I can retime them, because you see the animation here, the splash was about 40 frames long, and it's too long. The original is about 10 frames, if you look at the clip from uh, Stranger Things. So just turn on the override frame on the modifier, and I can see at frame 1, I want frame 1, insert a keyframe, and then go to frame 10, and say, well, on this one, I want, let's say, frame 30, insert a keyframe, and now the playback will be much faster. Another advantage of using Alembic is I can reuse this splash many times in the scene. And it's much lighter than carrying the entire simulation. In order to create a very cool splash, I created a bunch of Susans, a bunch of monkeys, and they just pass through the geometry. Each of these monkeys have fluid attached to them, but as effectors. So effectors means collision object. I use the monkey head because they have a weird shape and when they pass through the geometry, the fluid, it creates a very nice splash and I animated them in location, rotation and scale and this way I could really decide where I want the splash to go, so more on the exterior, just on top, any way I want it. So when I run the simulation, this is what I get. But I still have another trick for you, because if I just left it like this, I would get a splash that would get completely flat on the ground, and I didn't want this. So I used a collision object, and this is actually from a test I did before when I was trying to figure out how to do this. And I tried with metaballs, it didn't work well, but I loved the geometry that it created. So this is what I did. I took this, I made it as an effector. And I placed this geometry just under the rabbit and I animated it so that it goes up as soon as the particles are in the air. This way when the fluid comes down it collides with the underneath geometry and it looks like we have more mass. If we take a look at it from the top view and I turned off the rabbit, you can see that my original collision geometry, the one in black, it was made from Suzanne actually, so you can still feel the head of Suzanne under. Okay, we're not there yet. I also wanted to create a wet map. So what I did was to take the water splash and I created a dynamic paint on it. And it is set up as a brush. And the only thing I changed was the paint. I want it to be a mesh and proximity here so that it's going to be a little bit blurry on the edges. And I animated the distance. This way, as the water spreads, it's going to get blurrier and blurrier on the edges. Well, you will see what I mean. Then I created another plane, I called it water. This one also has a dynamic paint, but this one is a canvas. 
And what I want to do on this one is to do an image sequence. I give it a resolution of 1024, that's enough for what we're doing. So what we want to do is to paint and we want to bake an image sequence. So you give it a cache and you bake it. So as the fluid intersects with the plane, it will create a map. This is what we're baking, a black and white map. Then you need to assign this map to the shader. And if I go into render mode, this is what it looks like. I use the map as a displacement. Let me turn off the fluid, you will see better what it does. Okay, so now you see I got this splash of water here and if I move the time slider, you can see it grows. This is the image sequence that has been generated. Very simple shader now, but this is just for test and you have a displacement map that is connected to the image sequence. That's it. Make sure that auto refresh is on on the image sequence. Now, even if cycles is set to experimental, I don't have the adaptive subdivision option here. And that's because I have a dynamic paint that will turn it off. And even if you turn off the visibility, it won't change anything. But if you delete the dynamic paint, you just click on the little X here. Now, if you go back to the modifiers, you can see adaptive subdivision is back on and the edges of the water are much better. It's not as jaggy as it was before. And that's how I got this water layer. And you can see it gets wider and wider because I animated the distance before on the brush. With the proper shading and lighting, it's gonna look much better than just having this blob on the ground. For the background, it's a very old trick. What I do is a camera projection. Actually, I have two cameras in my scene. I got the original camera and I got another one that I call Prush Cam. It's actually a copy of the first camera without the animation on the first frame because this is where we see the most of the background. Now, if we take a look from this camera, you can see, of course, the image is wrapped with the default UVs. It's not gonna work well. So what I'm gonna do here is to select the object and I'm gonna add a modifier. And this one is gonna be a projection, a UV projection, and I'm gonna project from my projection cam. And now you see the image is just mapped properly. Now, if I switch back to the original animated camera, you will see I get some kind of parallax distortion. It's not the real thing, but it's gonna be so blurry in the background, it's gonna work just fine. Now, I know some of you are probably already starting to write in the comments. You could also select all the faces and do a UV project from view. But that's not going to work because if you want to scale the, the box, the rectangle, to make it sure that it's deep enough, well, this is what you get. You get this weird Alfred Hitchcock effect here, which is pretty cool, but this is not what we want here. Now, if I do it as a modifier instead, it's going to be always projected. It's not going to affect the geometry itself. So I project from the camera. And now if I scale, you can see that I can adjust the box to match the wall in the back. I wanted to add some crap on the ground. So what I did is to create a new plane. It's not the same one as the ground plane because I want to be able to adjust the height here. So you see if I turn it back to zero, everything interpenetrates too much with the ground so I can really adjust it the way I need it. So I got this plane and I added a geometry node modifier. And on this one, it's actually very simple. I distribute points on the surface. Then I instance the point. What do I instance? It's a collection and the collection is dust. Well, I actually recycled the dust flakes that I did for my Infinity War clip. So yeah, just a copy paste. Check out the clip because I'm not gonna explain it again. Link is in the description. Okay, so we have a random value here from zero to 360 for 360 degrees that I plug into a combined X, Y, Z in the Y because I only want a rotation in the Y axis and this will be plugged into the rotation. Then I have a random value for the scale from five to 10, but I can change it to whatever I want. So if I put this to, let's say 15, I will get bigger flakes on the ground. And I did a slight adjustment on the shader just so that it can fit this scene. Hey, you know what? I already have these particles, so might as well create little floating particles, dust particle in the air. And that's simple to do. I just created a cube. Well, you don't see it right now because it's in instancing the particles. And you can see that this cube doesn't cover the entire scene because otherwise the flakes will become too small and with the depth of field, they're just gonna disappear. So I just need them where the camera is passing through. So to make this, it's quite simple. You create a particle system on the cube and you want to emit from a volume. Next, we want to scroll down to rotation. We're going to turn them on and just randomize the face so that they don't rotate all at the same speed. Now we want to render them as a collection. In this case, I called it a floating dust. It's the same thing as the dust on the ground, but with a different shader. Keep scrolling down, make sure that the gravity is at zero. Then you add a turbulence field, you play with the settings, and then you're in business. If I turn on the rendering, this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. They're a little bit too bright, but I will fix this in comp because I will render them on a separate layer. Okay, so let's take a look at the final result. We're gonna sit three times in a row.
Compositing wise, there's not much there. I got my three layers, so I got one for the floating dust, I got one for the fog, and I got my main render. I do them separately so I can adjust them the way I want them. So I just screen them on top of each other. Then it's a series of grading, and I use the crypto mat to decide what I want to change. So adjustments here and there on the rabbit, even on the eyes. I made the, the eyes a little bit red, change the background a little bit. Let's take a look. Here I use a keyer note so I could get the luminance of the image so I can tint the highlights. I want them a little bit more blue, and that's what I did here with this gray node. So you see the highlights are a little bit bluish. I also made some adjustments in the background, a little ramp here so that the background fades a little bit better and this highlight in the background. And finally a general grade on everything and I reduce the saturation. I use a transform because there was a white line at the top of the image and I just scaled the image to get rid of it. So yeah, some of this stuff should have been done in lighting but you know, I do this on weekends. I don't have that much time to do this so it was faster to just do it in comp and just ship it. I added some grain to the image to give it a more realistic look. You can see the difference if I turn it on and off before and after, but I think the grain is too sharp. So I add a blur node at the end just to make it softer because grain is never that sharp. And that's it for the compositing. So in the end, I think the result looks pretty cool. Of course, I could have spent more time. Shut up, cat. In the end, I could have spent more time on the lighting, on the fur and all the little details and everything, but hey, it's a demo and the idea was to show how to do the splashes. And I think I did a pretty good job. I'm really happy with it. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. Shut up, cat. Shut up. Will you shut up? Shut up!